been flying low. A lot of folks think that America's fixing to fall. But speaking just for me, some friends from Tennessee, I got a thing or two to tell you all. This lady may have stumbled, she ain't never fell. If ISIS doesn't believe that, we're gonna break down your gates of hell. Let's put our foot back on the path of righteousness and end God bless America again. Well, you never did think that we ever get together again in America. You never did think that we ever get together again. I'm telling you, I'm walking proud, preaching loud again in America. You never did think that we ever get together again. of New York City to the San Francisco Bay. Everything to see between there is our own. We may have done just a little bit of fighting amongst ourselves. The outside folks best leave us alone. Well, we're gonna get together. You can take that to the bank. That's the Cowboys and the Bikers and the Rebels and the Yanks. Now go and lay your hand on a Yukon Husky fan. I think you're gonna know just what I mean. Uh, you never did think that we ever get together again in America. You never did think that we ever pull together again. I'm walking proud, preaching loud again in America. You never did think with four guitar strings that we ever get together with the greatest people in Hartford can ever get again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome my friend. Mr. Franklin Graham! steps to pray. Thank you. Our Father sends his greetings. 97. His mind is still, he's still clear. He just doesn't hear, doesn't see very well. And he doesn't think anybody remembers who he is. So he's told me, if you meet anybody that remember me, say hello. Thank you that you care so much about our country. Our country's in trouble. We're in trouble. And I can tell you right now, we're in trouble spiritually, as a nation. We're in trouble racially. I remember growing up in the 60s, and I don't think our racial tensions have been any higher uh, in my lifetime than we see today. Economically, we're in great trouble. Politically, Washington is broken. And I can tell you today, there's no political party, no individual that's going to be able to turn this thing around. Now, I may make some people mad, but I do this a lot. And I don't mean to step on your toes, but listen to me. I have no hope in the Democratic Party. Zero hope. Before you Republicans start high-fiving each other. I have zero hope in the Republican Party. The only hope, the only hope, friends, listen to me, the only hope is Almighty God. The most important 
important thing that we that we can do here today as Christians is to pray. Yes. Nehemiah chapter 1. The children of Israel are in captivity in Babylon. God had brought judgment against Israel because of its sins and its disobedience. And God brought the Babylonian army, they destroyed Jerusalem, and they carried all the people back to Babylon as slaves. They were slaves in Babylon. Now, Nehemiah, in the book of Nehemiah in the Old Testament, Nehemiah is a slave in the king's palace. And Nehemiah writes, and I want to read what Nehemiah had to say in chapter 1, starting in verse 2. And this is Nehemiah speaking. Hanani, one of my brothers, came from Judah with some other men. And I questioned them about the Jewish remnant that had survived the exile. And I also asked them about Jerusalem. They said to me, those who survived the exile are back in the province, are in great trouble and disgrace. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down. Its gates have been burned with fire. When I heard these things, I sat down and I wept. For some days I mourned and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. Then I said, Lord, the God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenants of love with those who love him and keep his commandments, let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants, the people of Israel. I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself and my father's family, have committed against you. We have acted very wickedly toward you. We have not obeyed your commands the decrees and laws that you gave to your servant, Moses. God heard Nehemiah's prayer, Amen. gave him favor. Yes. And ladies and gentlemen, we need God's favor today as a nation. Yes. Nehemiah is a slave in the king's palace, but he prayed. And God heard his prayer, and this pagan king gave Nehemiah the authority to return and to go back to Jerusalem to rebuild those walls. Now, he wasn't an engineer. He wasn't some great construction guy. The guy's a slave in the king's palace. But he had God's favor. He had God's favor. And ladies and gentlemen, when we pray, God hears prayer. And God can give America one more time. He can give us his favor. We need God's favor. Now, in 52 days after he arrived back in Jerusalem, 52 days, those walls were rebuilt. And the gates were rehung on the walls of Jerusalem. And you can go to Jerusalem today and there are still, they will point out to you, the archaeologists will point out, there are still stones in the wall today that Nehemiah had set. And people say to me, Franklin, it's too late for America. Oh, really? And I hear that. It's too late. It's not too late if we pray. It's not too late if God gives us favor. It's not too late. You see... The moral and political walls of our nation are crumbling. Yes. They're falling down. Yes. Any type of wicked thought and activity can come and go. And our educators, big business, politicians, and sadly to say, some of our churches are more concerned about political correctness than they are about God's truth and His righteousness. <laughs> Let's look what Nehemiah did. He fasted, he prayed. His prayer was to confess the sins of his people, to confess the sins of himself. 
and to confess the sins of his father's family. The most important thing we can do here today, ladies and gentlemen, is pray. Amen. And that's why we've come. Come to pray. And what I'd like to ask you to do is just grab the hand of the person next to you. Maybe a total stranger. That's all right. Hope they don't have a cold. I need both hands. Just grab the hand of the person next to you. I want you to listen to me. I gotta have both hands. The first thing that he did was confess the sins of his people. And I think of the sins of our nation. Where do you begin? So many. I think of abortion, the murder of children in a mother's womb. The sin of same-sex marriage. That's legal today. It's a sin. The entertainment industry. Think of Hollywood. Gun violence that they glorify every night on TV or if you go to the movies. Sex that they glorify. When I think of the pride of our nation, you know this grieves the heart of God. We have not done enough for the poor in our country. So many areas that we have failed God as a people. And what I'd like to ask you to do right now is I want us to confess the sins of our nation out loud, all of us together to God. As God leads you, as He brings sins of our nation to your mind, let's pray to God. And let's let this whole city here, the Christians standing here on this, these capital steps, calling out on the name of God, confessing the sins of our nation. And let's pray now, and then after a few moments, I'll close us in prayer. But let's pray.
we have committed so many sins against you, Father. Hear our prayers today. We confess as a people the sins of our nation. We've turned our back on you, God. Forgive us. We pray this in the name of your mighty Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.